wins overall in the series, 13 straight Ws for the Bucks against the Catamounts here in Johnson City. Bruce Trambarger, sometimes you have a team's number. It seems like Steve Forbes' staff has the Catamounts number here over the last few years. It's been a rather one-sided series over the years. Ironically, Western's last win was the last game of the Murray Barto here at ETSU. That, of course, being at a Southern Conference tournament appearance in 2015. The Catamounts of Western Carolina, one of the top turnaround stories in SoCon play. We'll get to that here in a little bit as you see the ETSU Bucks huddling up one final time in front of a packed house here of what should be 6,000 plus yet again at Freedom Hall in Johnson City. ETSU 15 and 1 on this home floor this year. They have won 46 of their last 52 games here inside Freedom Hall, including 36 wins in Southern Conference play in this facility under the direction of fifth year head coach Steve Forbes. An energetic crowd has been lifted in spirit by a very emotional senior day celebration. We're ready for one more basketball game here in Johnson City before heading down to Asheville for the Southern Conference Tournament next week. These two teams know when they'll play. They may even play in the quarterfinal round against each other. But still stuff to settle here in this regular season finale as ETSU plays for what could be an outright Southern Conference Championship. Let's take a look at the starting five there. You see Bo Hodges, our highlighted player. Again, 30 points away from 1,000 in his career, averaging just better than 13 points per game on the season. It's Lucas Kassan with the first shot of the ball game. A little shallow on the easy reach in at Western Carolina with a rebound. You see the Catamounts here. A little difference in their starting lineup today. No Carlos Dotson. He did not play against the Bucks in Halloween not getting the start though expected to play here this afternoon Tisdale out of the corner on senior day he misfires on his first jumper and the cradle rebounder Mason Faulkner keys the break the other way you might say that's quick but ETSU wants to play fast they want a maximum number of possessions and force the Western Carolina bigs to run in transition all afternoon Matt Halverson with Faulkner emerging Halverson's exploits may be a little bit understated in this 18-win Catamount year as the Cats turn it over for the second consecutive possession to start. ETSU coming out with that lockdown defensive principle that's seen Steve Forbes' club win 26 games this year. Yeah, both teams start out half-court man-to-man. A little different for Western Carolina, more of a pack line to keep you out of the middle. ETSU going to get out in the passing lanes. Will Hodges looking for the roll. Instead, the Bucks are working around. No score. Regular season finale. Western Carolina will be in the 4-5 game against Mercer. Just left to sort out who's the four and who's the five. Down to two on the shot clock. Boyd releases. And this fires off the front. Faulkner again. The rebound is third of the game already. You see the high ball screen. They're going to try to, ETS is going to try to pull Western Carolina defenders out on the floor and make them defend those ball screens. Trying to get a 1-5 switch. Adamant's trying to get their first shot off. They will on this possession. Faulkner's three off the back iron and the high miss rebounded by Tisdale. Boyd with the nice bounce pass in rhythm to Hodges with the lay in. And the Bucks are on board. One weakness Western Carolina has bouncing the floor in defensive transition. Too easy a look. Mason Faulkner, one of the top assist men in the league. He'll take his own shot here. And this fires on the lay-in, ETSU three on two the other way. Boy, the rhythm three from Hodges, got it. Started on the defensive end, Bo Hodges, help side defense, secondary defender walled up, forced Faulkner to shoot over his length and athleticism. Faulkner second to only Josh Sharkey in terms of assists. He turns one over there, trying to front the pass. It's Tisdale traveling first. Actually, they'll call an offensive foul and a great retreat move by Matt Halverson to get back to take the charge. I like what Tisdale did, though. If you see a defender backpedaling, attacking, forcing to make a play, Halverson did. Mark Crosser, his second season at Western Carolina. It's taken him one year to see his team turn around 11 wins in the other direction. Western Carolina was 7-25 and a year ago. 4-14 four in the league. They come into play here in the regular season finale, 18-10, and 10, playing for what could be their 11th Southern Conference victory this year. One of the best stories in all of the region in terms of turnaround success on the basketball floor. And when there's a prosser attached to it, you're not surprised by success at all. Three-point shot off the mark. 
by Travion McCray, the freshman's first shot and miss of the afternoon. And now ETSU trying to attack, keep the tempo up. Tisdale tripped up, still gets the pass off. And Trey Boyd's got that senior day stroke going on here, helping ETSU do an 8-0 run to start. And what about Tisdale punching it out to his teammate, Davian Williamson, with the drive and hammer pass. ETSU scoring off the secondary break. Walker on the drive. A late dish and a foul on the play. Nice feed inside to Xavier Court, the freshman out of Sulphur Springs, making just his second start of the year. Great boy will pick up the foul. Great read by Faulkner. Got the head and shoulders around. The side came to help. Had to leave his, the player he was defending. Court with his hands catch ready makes a play through contact. He goes to the line for two. Bork, a 55% free throw shooter. Western Carolina, fourth best in the league, just under 72%. Mentioned Faulkner in his passing ability. He saw a great thread the needle type feed there to Cork. Faulkner is 20th in the nation in assists. It's over six per game. Coming off a triple double. His second of the year. Second of the year, exactly. One of only two players in the country with two triple doubles. And interestingly enough, Cameron Langley of North Carolina a and is the other one. He was playing against Western Carolina when Faulkner got his first triple though. Reminds me a great deal of a player I played against, Vern Fleming, University of Georgia, Olympian Final Four player. Had a nice career with the Indiana Pacers. Hassan a little strong, playing for the contact. Western Carolina with a run-out rebound. Faulkner and an offensive foul. Foul on Faulkner is his first. That'll send us to our first media break here in Johnson City. Catamount still searching for their first field goal. It's a seven-point lead for the home team on senior day. Trey Boyd feeling it from deep early. Part of his six has got the Bucks up seven. City, Tennessee, Western Carolina with turnaround season. Part of that has been their success away from Cullowee. Eight and six on the road under the direction of Mark Prosser, who's the second year head coach, graduate of Maris. Already 30 wins in his NC, or rather in his overall career. He's a two-time NCAA tournament assistant, was part of that Bucknell staff under Pat Flannery that beat Kansas in the NCAA tournament years back. Got a storied basketball past trying to lead this catamount program toward a 20 win season they're too shy here in this regular season finale play from down now seven points the deficit bucks with the basketball trying to add to their lead they have yet to give up the field goal david williamson crashing through the lane loose ball corralled by mason faulkner here come the catamounts steger Bumping through the lane, and he'll draw contact. Tisdale with the foul, that's his first. Otto Steger at 6'5", 206 pounds. The senior out of Upper Arlington, Ohio, is a load to contend with. And kind of a matchup problem, too, Bruce. He's a guy that can more than handle his own on the interior, but the also best three-point shooter in the league as well, statistically. Yeah, he's probably a natural three, having to play as an undersized stretch four. You see, nice slice to the basket there. Tyler Harris is first two points, first field goal for the Catamounts. The speaker has to play as an undersized stretch four out of necessity for Mark Cross. And no Carlos Dotson yet on the floor. Dotson held out of the starting lineup today. We have a whistle and a blocking foul called on Matt Halverson, who's already drawn one charge. That time couldn't quite get his feet over to set around Patrick Good. First foul on Halverson. And Sled normally third in the rotation. He's in the lineup quickly. To give Cork a breather. Trey Boyd feeling it so far. He's three for four from the field. Give him eight points out of the ETSU 10. And you better look out if you're Western because he's normally a second half guy when he makes his first one. There's not a lot stopping Trey Boyd. 30 point performance in this building against UNCG just a few weeks ago. ETSU nearly had their fifth turnover logged of the game. They have yet to score a point off those turnovers. And here comes Carlos Dotson. Such a transformation in Boyd's game. Just a score when he arrived here, but became a leader this year in the offseason. 
defends at a high level, rebounds down. A sacrifice personal numbers for the good of the team. Pass over to the corner, Harris. Air balls, Dotson on the catch, tries to pass back out, throws it away. Carlos Dotson, turnover prone when he played in his last contest against Sanford, had a double-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds, but had four turnovers in just 17 minutes. Asked to pass out of the post a lot in the three-point shooting heavy offense. Yeah, and he is a good passer, has good vision. Finds players on the perimeter inside out. Takes up a lot of space. Patrick Good over in the corner finds Williamson. His three ball off the mark. Tyler Harris, the rebound for the Catamounts. Western Carolina, second to ETSU in rebounding on the year. Plus five on the boards. ETSU a little better than that. One of the few teams that will match ETSU's interior rebounding ability and probably rebounding from the guard position as well. Alverson standing out out of bounds. That's turnover number six for Western. And we talked about it during the break, David. No points off turnovers for ETSU. Four of those six turnovers have been of the dead ball variety. Mark Prosser's team can survive those. You don't want them. They don't hurt you as bad as, as those nuclear bombs that occur in the middle third of the floor that the opponent can take to the rim quickly. Boy, the extra pass. Offensive rebound by Hodges, no good, but he's fouled in the process. And we'll head to the line. Hodges missed the open, or excuse me, Hughley misses the open look. Trey Boyd, great pass off the shot fake. Hughley, I think, surprised to find himself so open. And that's what happens when you have defenders flying at you like Boyd does. Great read there to Hughley. Just misses the reverse layup. But Hodges there with the offensive rebound. Oh, Hodges at 64% on the free throw shooting this year. At 14 points against the Catamounts in ETSU's win in Cullowee back on the 18th of January. And how about that highlight reel reverse dunk off the alley-oop at Wofford. One of the most precision plays we've seen in the league this year. Not only the finish by Hodges, but the pass from Tisdale from the top of the three-point arc. Found his man in the right spot to get the reverse dunk. Hughley knocks the ball loose off of Dotson out of bounds. Turnover number seven. Where the Catamounts can't hang on to it right now. Textbook defense in the post. Hughley pushes back, gives a little cushion. Paid attention today during the scouting report. B.J. Mackey going over and over again. Now Dotson's a left-hand, right-shoulder player. Hughley gives a cushion, forces Dotson to his left shoulder, right hand, where he's far less efficient. 12 to 3 start for the Bucks. Boyd working off the freshman McCray. The hard guy to stop thus far now gives to Hodges. The only two with points in the game thus far. Hodges the high kiss off the glass. That's six for Hodges. Just a post ISO. Hodges jumps up and shoots over Harris, a long athletic defender. And Harris responds on the other end. Only player with field goals for the Catamounts. He's got two of them. Four of their five have come by the way of the Charlotte freshman. That's a tough shot off one foot, the lane line drive. That's what he does. He uses the banking board to soften the blow after taking it up strong. Mark Prosser said the freshman had a, limit, a limitless upside after signing in last year in the early signing period. One of the first full recruiting spectrum signees, if you will, from Mark Prosser and his staff after taking over. They really like this freshman class. Cork, Travian McCray, Tyler Harris, the athlete of Charlotte. Carlos Dotson picks up a foul. He's checking again on the drive. Dotson, a foul prone player. Yeah, and they don't have the depth ETSU does. Dotson has to stay on the floor. He's fouled out five times this year. Commits a personal foul every 10 minutes. Mark Prosser has to have him on the floor at the end of this one. Western's going to hang around. Boyd has one rattle out. Fighting for the rebound underneath is Bonnie Patterson. And the Bucks will go back to it. We have a whistle. And a stoppage. And it's a shot clock 
or related issue. But how about Vonnie Patterson with that offensive rebound in traffic, extending the possession? It's always interesting to look at players, whether they're young players, the freshman that you just mentioned for Western Carolina, or a player like Vonnie Patterson, a junior college transfer in for ETSU. You look at them at, at this stage of the season, that regular season finale, getting ready to head into the Southern Conference Tournament, you start thinking about their upside for the next year. It's only natural to think about the players drifting out, who's going to take some roles. Bonnie Patterson's one of those guys that looks like with a year in the in the off-season program could go from support player to headline player next year for the Bucks. Well, he's so versatile. He can fill in at three, maybe even four different positions, and he can guard all five. And in Steve Forbes' system, that's going to earn you some minutes. Mark Prosser again inheriting a Western Carolina club that won only seven games a year ago. They have had to make do also this year as they have boosted that win total up without Cameron Gibson for the last now 12 games. He hasn't played since January 22nd. He was a guy that was averaging just under double figures scoring and about two and a half rebounds a contest as well. I think you're looking at two head coaches here, Bruce, that you can make the case that this is the one-two race for the Southern Conference Coach of the Year. Certainly Steve Forbes has done amazing things putting ETSU on the national map. But how about Mark Prosser's team picked to finish seventh in the regular season and 18 wins as a chance at an uh, outside chance at a finish in the top four. And very similar styles. Uh, Fast-paced offensively, defensively man-to-man. -man, get a lot of offense off that. Transitioning defense into offense. Styles that have worked well and propelled both clubs to the top echelon of the Southern Conference. Taking a few moments just to make sure that all of the timing is right here. Or perhaps watching the game back in real time just to relive some of these early moments. And it's working to Western Carolina's favor right now. Number one, momentum certainly favored ETSU. Number two, the Catamounts not nearly as deep as the Bucks. So. Added rest and next dead ball. We have a media timeout on top of that. So. Advantage Western with the stoppage of play. Pop your popcorn at home if you've got it. Thank you. Boy triggers the inbounds. ETSU goes back to work. Patrick Good. Off the front iron. Offensive stick back. There he is. Jerome Rodriguez. First points in this facility since New Year's Day. That's what you need to get going when you've been out. Trying to get back into playing shape, trying to get back into rhythm. Easy one early, pops into his hands, finishes it, sees it go through the net. Playing in his 50th career game at ETSU today, Jerome Rodriguez missed 13 straight games with a foot injury. He's on the board here today, though. 16. Tennessee, David Jackson, Bruce Strandberger with you here. Courtside, 11-point lead for ETSU at 16-5. Bucks, of course, with a win. Finish off the Southern Conference regular season title in sole possession. What would be another championship year under Steve Forbes' direction? Bruce Strandberger, we're about halfway through. Your thoughts on the way that this one has unfolded here this afternoon? Oh, ETSU getting it done defensively at all three levels, guarding the point of attack. Forcing Western 33% from the field, finishing plays defensively, allowing only one offensive rebound and forcing eight turnovers. And David, they're doing it without fouling. Tisdale with the two personal fouls other than that, and TSU only one team foul. Rodriguez scored on the last possession, trying to take it up again, but traveled with it first on the post move. So a turnover for Rodriguez limits the finish on the second one. Let's watch it again. Dotson, good post defender. Put Rodriguez in tough space. I don't know. <laughs> I can tell by the look on your face. You had some questions. Also trying to get established inside. Haven't been able to go to him yet. The scoring perspective. Halverson, the extra pass. And again to Steger, and he drills the three. Otto Steger. 
43% shooter from three. That's the SoCon's best, 12th best mark in the nation. He is a deadly shooter from the outside. It's his first look from deep to make it a 16-8 affair. Well, they do such a good job of spreading it, as do the Hawks. Patrick Good just inside the line for the two. Weston has those two shooters, Halverson and Steger, on the floor. They send Halverson to the corner, and Steger works middle third. Dotson against Rodriguez. That's a matchup you'd have paid money for early in the season. Two of the best big men in the league going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Dotson draws the foul on Rodriguez. Yeah, well, well, line. Yeah, and difficult for ETSU to double Dotson when Steger's on the floor. They'll double down when Steger's out, because that'll leave Weston with... Only from the Carlos Dotson doing his best Jerome Rodriguez imitation this year. The only player in the Southern Conference with a double-double. Average coming into this regular season finale. 15 and a half points, 10 rebounds. That free throw partner didn't draw higher. 58% shooter shows you why. They want a sandwich here real bad. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich to everybody. As Dotson goes over two at the line. Boyd from deep. And the rebound to Travion McRae. And now a steal away by Hodges at midcourt. And the finish off the side of the rim. He'll shoot two. Boy, Bo Hodges, just a one-man show from a defensive standpoint. Freshman mistake by McCray. Telegraph the soft toss. Bo Hodges with the pick. If he, had, if he doesn't slip, he catches that in rhythm. Really attacks McCray. Hodges two for two at the line. If you're Western, you're better off throwing that into the 12th row than those live ball picks. ETSU so good at transitioning their defense into offense, beating you up with numbers. Seven points now for Hodges. One more coming. And eight. Good to see those going down. Hodges in tonight's game, 65% from the line. One area in which he doesn't excel. Worked hard on his mid-range shooting and free throw conversions. Out to the pass on the interior. Knocked out of bounds and will stay with the catamount. 16 on the shot. Telegraph the pocket pass. Talked earlier, Dodgers. A good passer inside out, also off the short road. It's a tough pass there in limited spacing. Steger the handoff from McCray. Down to 10 to shoot. Dotson loose inside and gets past Rodriguez for a lay-in. First field goal for Carlos Dotson. Western creates space with the dribble handoff. Bucks with a small lineup able to switch on the perimeter. Western still able to get numbers and work the ISO into Dotson. Here's Dale back on the floor during that last dead ball scenario. Dre Boyd from deep trying to find the Distance on his third three-pointer of the day. Dotson helps the progression up the floor for the Catamounts. Steger. Dotson up and underneath, and he scored on back-to-back possessions. Showed a little leather. Got Jeremy, Jerome Rodriguez off his feet. Western with a numbers advantage and conversion. Rodriguez screening Tisdale. Now the kick back out. Tisdale off the mark. Dotson the rebound. Catamount's getting back into the game with rebounding thus far. Dotson's been a big part of that. Guarding not only the point of attack, but finishing on the defensive glass. Limiting ETSU to one shot now. Steger short. Whistle on the rebound. Number box, number one, Trey Boyd. And a foul on Trey Boyd. That's his second. Williamson and Gasson check in. Boyd and Rodriguez out, Williamson and Kassan back in. Too much body there by Boyd on the rebound. Now ETSU, two backcourt players with two personal fouls. Tisdale had the two early. Faulkner works against Tisdale. 
Western Carolina choosing not to attack. Alverson tripped up through the lane, and Williamson will draw the contact. Well, Matt Halverson, again, you know, most teams have a guy that's as capable offensively as Halverson is. He's a little bit more of a storyline, but when you've got the emergence of Faulkner, second leading scorer in the league, you've got Carlos Dotson averaging a double-double. Matt Halverson kind of drifts down the list a little bit in terms of his, I guess, offensive awareness to the casual passerby. He is a easy starter for probably nine out of ten teams in the league. Yeah, he's a, a catch-and-shoot guy. Also plays a lot of minutes. He's an Ironman, and his production has not decreased late in the year. Steger off the mark. Bucks trying to extend an eight-point lead. They've led by as many as 12 here in the first half. They've led from the opening buzzer. Contact against Travion McCray. He was run over by the bus that is Bo Hodges. McCray picks up number one, 20 to 12, ETSU on top of Western Carolina. SoCon regular season finale from Johnson City. Eight point lead for ETSU on top of Western Carolina here at Freedom Hall in Johnson City. David Jackson courtside along with Bruce Strandbarger. And Bruce, we talked about Western Carolina staying around right now because they're rebounding so well. Right now, 11 to 10 on the boards. They've also taken over in terms of paint scoring as well with Carlos Dotson getting some more comfort coming off the bench today. Gives them an inside presence that they don't have yet with Cool or when Slade is on the floor. Able to stretch the defense vertically. Play inside out. We got a foul on Davian Williamson away from the ball. That's Williamson's second. So that's now the third ETSU guard to pick up two fouls at this stage of the game. Something to watch. Faulkner. On the drive down the lane, he gets the two. So good at that lane line drive and what that does, that takes away the help side, especially when you have shooters on either side as you do with Halverson and Steve. Faulkner's second game here in Freedom Hall. He played in this facility a couple of years ago with Northern Kentucky. And now we have a travel on Gasson. Stuttered on the catch. Second post player turning it over right at the rim with quick feet. Same location, same official. I think this one was there. First one maybe a little questionable, but Archibald Whaley with a right call. Six point ball game. Faulkner and the Catamounts can make it a one possession affair. Steger trying to drive on Hodges. Harris was hot early. We'll get below the foul line. Scoops one off the glass, no good, but the tip follow good by Cork. His first field goal, he's got three in the game now. Got the switch they wanted. Took the side to the glass. Harris off one foot, but running one hand. Harris has got some athleticism. You can yeah, sure over, see that. Over length. That, that's a tough shot if you're out there by yourself, much less over seven foot length. And then Williamson stripped on the way up. Harris comes out of traffic with the basketball. Off to Faulkner, the hit down the court. And he traveled with it. That's a tough catch for a big running full speed. I know if you're a guard, you want to reward him for getting out in transition. Cork, good job to run that one down, but drag his pivot foot. TSU's largest lead was 12. Whittled down to four. Just driving against Steger. Lost the handle on it. Out comes Halverson. Nice job by Steger. Knowing Hodge is not a threat from the corner. Pushes back, gives a cushion. Walker blocked away on the baseline and now a whistle. And they'll call possession to ETSU. I don't think there's going to be a foul whistled here. No, there will be. They'll call. Faulkner with the reach. That's his second. Let's watch the play again. Hodges looked like he banged his knee pretty good when he hit the deck. Great help by the side. Made Faulkner come in. The side, the second off the floor with the soft block shot, keeping it in play. 
17 foul against Western Carolina. Bo Hodges to the line for one and one. the Catamounts with a four-point deficit. Held on to that one a little too long. Maybe try to guide it at the end. It's so good on those first four. Harris creative off the dribble. Can't get the roll. Gasson fighting for the rebound. Harris just hanging on for dear life. And the tie-up will give the ball to the Catamounts. Had the size advantage. Back Trey Boyd down. Boyd a good job pushing back, walling up. I don't know what's more impressive the arms of Lucas Gasson holding Tyler Harris in the basketball up in midair or the grip strength of Harris to hang on to the ball and maintain like a, a, almost like a levitation. Those are two outstanding athletes. How about the play Gasson made in space Wednesday night? Steal in the middle of the floor and took it the distance off the bounce and finished at the rim. Tallest point guard in the league. Been the play of the season. Really swung the momentum in that game. Dotson traveled with it. It's a slippery day for post players. It's Gasol with the home ball defense. He's on an island by himself. Steaker in the game, but unable to double down. Gasol holds up, gets the stop. Bucks trying to capitalize. Western Carolina with another turnover. They're in a double figures already. They usually average about 14 a game. Williamson on the cut, gets free, hits the mid-range jumper. Yeah, great recognition. That's a tough matchup for Halverson. He's just not fast enough to stay with Williamson in space. You have to close on him because Williamson can can that shot just like I know Steaker can from the short corner. Pass I guess that's a long corner, isn't it? Yeah, the pass fake gave him a clear alleyway at the shot. He's got six, two, three may or three point made field goals. Williamson for Boyd, tried the same thing, shot fake, teardrop, Dotson on the catch. Oh, running one-hander, that's, that's a tough shot, but back to Ano Steger, one of the most underrated players in the league, DJ Mackey, emphasized that today at the shooter end, one of his players have their nose in between the three and the three, Steger a threat from inside 25 at all times. Steger driving this time, will get fouled on the way through the paint. Hodges with the reach. So Steger will go to the line. Not only is he deadly accurate from three, he's also an 80% free throw shooter. Steger best by percentage on the team heading into this final game of the regular season. And that's set up by the fact that he can knock down the long ball. He's not a guy that's going to blow by you with a quicker athletic first step. He just gets you on, on his hip and, and rides you down the lane. He'll throw that head back and flop after he initiates contact. He's coming off a career-high 31 points against Sanford back on Wednesday. Went 7 of 11 from 3 in that game in 31 minutes. One-point ball game here in Johnson City. Steger on a 5-0 run himself. The media timeout next dead ball. Going for Patterson. 10 to shoot. Boyd going to back it out with five. Fires from deep. Patterson tipped the rebound to live underneath, and we have a rebounding foul call against Steger on the push. So Otto Steger picks up foul number two. We head to the final media stop at here at Freedom Hall. How about the Catamounts of Western Carolina? What's down 12 to pull to within one here in Johnson City. SoCon basketball on this final Saturday. Packed house here today for the regular season finale. ETSU and Western Carolina. The Bucks lead the Catamounts by a point. And again, Bruce Strambarger continue to look at what Western Carolina has done inside. 12 to 6 on points in the paint. Rebound advantage by three on the boards. The Catamounts just have kind of chipped away at this thing. And they find themselves right back in the contest. Really gotten it done on the defensive end, David. Tremendous job of contesting shots. And holding ETSU to 
to one shot opportunities. ATSU only one offensive rebound in the last 12 minutes. Bonnie Patterson at the line, knocks down both shots, had arguably his most complete Southern Conference game against Western Carolina. And these two teams met back in mid-January at 9.7 rebounds. And an ETSU win on the road, one of the few teams to defeat the Catamounts and Cullowee this year. Three-point affair. ETSU has yet to trail. Catamounts trying to even up. Dotson, a left-hander over the top of Gasson. Oh, tough oh, shot. And you want to turn him the other way. That's where he's comfortable, right shoulder, left hand. But Bucks, even without Hanno Steger on the floor, elect to play straight up in the post. Dotson just a little too wide. Six points for Dotson. Patterson throws one away. He's looking for Williamson to stay. Costly turnover there for the Bucks. That's their seventh. They tried to ISO Dotson with the on-ball screen. Good job just staying back. Got him out shooting close to 50%. Now we have a whistle and a reach-in on Hodges on the roll. That's Hodges' second. So Hodges, Williamson, Tisdale, Boyd, all with two fouls apiece. It'll be a war of attrition here on this final Saturday. Offensively, it's a scheme very similar to Furman. They run a lot of middle third ball screens. But it's difficult for you to help and support and tag the roll guy because you have to stay in the corner on the shooters. Certainly can't leave Halverson. Mason Faulkner evens things up at 24. Faulkner, one of the more decorated scorers in the league. Does it in just about every category. Assist points. His free throw gives the Catamounts their first lead of the contest, 25-24. Under three minutes to play here in the first half. And you can just see the growth of Mark Foster's team not panicking down 12 early. And now a touch inside for Lucas Gasson, who's been nearly a double-double scorer the last few weeks, gets his first two coming down the closing minutes of the first half. And out of the corner, the three-point answer. Travion McRae's first points of the game. And that's where Faulkner is so dangerous. You think you stopped him. He's underneath the goal. Then he hammers it out to the corner. A very creative player. Great point, hot early. Has since cooled off a bit. He'll take the step against the freshman and leave it short. If he follows his shot, that ball bounces right into his hands. Tried to backpedal it in rhythm. Faulkner for McRae out of the corner. Travion McRae with six. He scored the last six. And Western Carolina once down 12 in the early going. Sees their lead extend the 31-26. A 30-second timeout called here by Steve Forbes. You're Western Carolina. You lost 25 a season ago. And you're closing in on 20. Playing with a lot of pride in Johnson City. Plus, Halverson returning home to the Tri-Cities. He's a key sport native. Catamount team has a lot of pride. They don't want a banner unfurled on them today. This is a Catamount team that, again, has won eight games away from Bumblebee this year. And similar starts in some of these affairs where they'll get down early, but using that inside-outside attack, very steadily chip away, chip away, and then find themselves in front. This year, the Catamounts 13-3 and three when leading at halftime, 5-7 and seven when they trail. And one of those losses to a Florida, a very talented Florida State team coached by Leonard Hamilton. I'll tell you what, they outplayed the Seminoles for 38, 39 minutes. Just kind of ran out of gas at the end. You have to wonder how good would this team be if they still had Cameron Gibson. Inside Gasson. Locked over the top of the bat by Harris. And the loose ball picked up by Dodson. McRae scored the last six. Had the possession. The position just couldn't catch it cleanly. And now the reach on Gasson, almost a frustration foul there. Oh, the box battling with Dotson the whole way down the floor. Yeah, if Gasson can get a clean catch on the low block, he converts that one pretty easy, but bobbed it just long enough to allow the help side to get a piece of it, disrupt the play. Dotson 0 for 2 at the line, six points in the game. 58% free throw shooter. Came in eighth in the league in points. Leading rebounder, fourth in field goal percentage. 
guy that at one point in time this year you could make a strong case for player of the year but there's so many guys in that conversation now not that Dotson isn't he's just got more fun. old school player plays below the rim space eater left hand right shoulder good pass Williamson the spin a little out of control can't get the finish Dotson the rebound Floor level, he never left the floor, just taking up space, wedging out of position. Under a minute to play here in the half. Whistle and a turnover on the drive. Travion McCray stepped out of bounds. After ETSU, you want to pick up the tempo a little bit. Western's controlled it for the last 16 minutes. Do you want to play fast here, maybe get two out of, of the last three possessions? 27 to 10 run for the Catamounts. So it's about the 12 minute mark. That's a good. Bank that one off the square there. And who is it closing on him in space? It's Tyler Harris. Timeout taken by Mark Prosser. Burns one before he loses it. Six point affair here. Western Carolina again has erased a 12 point deficit to take a six point lead and could take the last shot of the first half. Bruce, you go back and look at things. Well, what, what turned the tide for the Catamounts to, to get them out of what looked like a team on their heels and turn them into the team that has been the dominant squad over the last 10 minutes? Well, two things. Number one, obviously, they bring Dotson in and stretches the defense, gives Western a threat on the low block. ETSU can't leave those shooters and Dotson able to uh, to have his way down low and just got so much better defensively in terms of contesting shots and closing on offensive rebounds limited the Bucks to one shot ETSU only one offensive rebound in the last 16 minutes this has been kind of ETSU's MO here over the last couple of ball games they were tied at Sanford at the break 42 apiece. They were down 10 to Walford before coming back from 14 down in the last 14 minutes to win that ball game on Wednesday. We will have a deficit at halftime here. Walker ready to go to work. Steger against Patterson. And traveled with it. Interior defense for the Bucks works with 8.4 to play. Yeah, you couldn't guard that any better than Bonnie Patterson did. Closed on the shooter with high hands, was in a good guarding position, moved his feet, gave a cushion, pushed back, forced the turnover. Not a horrible turnover if you're Western. Opportunity to set the defense and get in front. ETSU needs a quick hitter here. Williamson across the line with five seconds. Gets all the way to the lane, gets blocked from behind. Rebound goes to the Catamounts. The heave, good if it goes. And that'll do it. The first half of play has concluded. Western Carolina's defense over the last six or so minutes stifling as they build a six-point lead at the break. Our halftime score here at Freedom Hall, Western Carolina 32, ETSU 26. Halftime coverage from Freedom Hall comes your way right after this. on the clock ready for second half action here at Freedom Hall six point lead for the visiting Catamounts over the hometown Bucks as we get ready for the final 20 minutes of regular season play David Jackson Bruce Strambart are with you Bruce the keys for each of these teams to establish themselves here in the second half the Western for Western continue to guard without fouling you have to have dots in the floor late for ETSU you got out rebounded 20 to 12 in the first half. More intensity, and you have to defend the post better. Good start for the Bucks, establishing Lucas Gasson on the low block. Gasson with four points here in the contest. Falter leads through traffic. Goes against Tisdale and a rifle through the lane, and Tisdale will get called for the reach. Much to the ire of the ETS coaching staff. Watch again. The 1 5 switch they wanted. Tisdale able to recover. There wasn't a lot there. Part of that star power, too. You make some partner, you make a noise in the league, you get those calls. Adam outs. Going to work again in the half court. 
point contest. Steger into a double team. Johnson over the top of Gasson can't get the roll, but he draws contact, and that's two quick whistles against UTSU. Gasson and Tisdale each picking up these first two fouls. UTSU allowing Dotson to get to his strong hand. Emphasis in shoot around has turned him to the weak side. Carlos Dotson, a 58% free throw shooter. He is three for four. Make him, or uh, rather, a uh, two of five now. Who's one for four. Give him eight points in the contest. It seems like when the fouls began to mount, the Bucks lost their aggression. Especially when Tisdale picked up number two. He, he's their heart and soul in terms of energy. Now saddled with three, the Bucks will have to play without their senior for a few more moments. Boy just inside the line. Off the back iron, Faulkner the rebound. Still one shot now, UTSU. One offensive rebound since the 16-minute mark of the first period. Steger couldn't have been more open for that shot. Ball bounces off the back of the iron and goes over the backboard. Not what you used to see from a guy that shoots 43% from three. Usually when they're that open, that's an easy make. Yeah, especially in transition. That's where he's so dangerous. You have to find him and run him off the line and literally get into his space. Steger's hit the hard ones here this afternoon. Patrick Good had an early two, finds Williamson in the corner. High arcing three rattles out. Gasson gets the ball tipped to him, rushes it home. Don't know who will get credit for the offensive rebound, but it was Trey Boyd with active hands to keep it alive. Lucas Gasson with a catch and finish in traffic. Let's see if that gets the Bucks going. Western able to keep this crowd out of it early. Dotson. Altered on the shot and a whistle and a rebounding foul against the Catamounts. They're going to get Dotson for the push. That's his second. Well, frustration after missing one at point blank range. You see Kassan with the emphatic finish. Dotson a frustration foul. Well, the kind you don't need. They, he tends to collect those. You want to see him getting his going to the boards. Or, Contesting a shot, not 94 feet from his basket. And a whistle and a hold against Dotson here. Two quick ones. Dotson rips off the head and he discussed. Mark Prosser will get him over to the bench quickly. Dotson trying to seal Gasson down low. Lots of contact between the two big men. A yeah, very emotional player. That's a good substitution because Dodson's on the birds and losing it right now. So Mark Price is going to give him an opportunity to cool off. Three-point ball game. Bucks could tie right here. Hodges for that tie. Leaves it short off the front of the rim. And the rebound tipped to Travion McRae. Didn't like that shot. I think Steger can guard Hodges off the bounce. Hodges bails him out by settling for a jumper. Hodges only 27% from three on the year. Steger misses another one. Boyd the rebound. Catamounts get back in numbers. Best transition defense they played in the United. And now Williamson slicing through traffic makes it a one-point affair. About the running one-hander in traffic with the off-hand, off-foot. Softly over the rim. David Williamson trying to get this crowd into it. Cuts the lead to one. Stop play to get Gasson off the floor. He's walking... Somewhat gingerly down to the edge. Told the coaching staff he was okay on the way by. Yeah, it's senior night. It's going to take more than that to get that big guy out of there for a long stretch. Faulkner on the attack. It's below Boyd and Hughley and finishes at the rim. As a great read, Xavier Cork just cleared out the middle. Faulkner read it and used Cork as a rolling screen. Bounced it all the way to the rim. Or with six, he's averaged better than 10 a game and three career contests against ETSU, including two with the Norse of Northern Kentucky. Hugely from the top. Good times the jump. And a rebounding foul against Patrick Good. 
There's going to be a race in this game to see which coach gets a technical first. But the nature of the foul calls, both have been incredibly emotional after contact. Tisdale's on the bench, so Patrick Will trying to take up some of the slack. Rebounds down. Just got a bit too much of Travion McCray. Walker kicks. McCray nails the three. Travion McCray with nine. Three off his season high. Good had to help down to help with the drive. And the hammer pass to McCray. Pump fakes into rhythm. Good goes flying by. McCray bounces himself into his natural motion. That's a good thought about the quick trigger. Usually on the interior. Goes up and under. Can't get the finish, but we'll have contact that will send us to our first media timeout of the second half. The whistle goes against Xavier Cork. That's his first timeout on the floor with 15.40 to play. 38-32. Catamounts maintaining a six-point lead over the Bucks here at Freedom Hall in Johnson City. Western Carolina utilizing some outside exploits here. Five of 12 from three in the contest. Ice water through Travion McRae's veins, part of his nine points here through Strandbarger. Western Carolina doing a great job of maintaining offensive rhythm here after a quick start by ETSU to start the second half. Yeah, they are. Just too easy to look. If you're Patrick Good, you're not a shot blocker. You certainly like the effort going out there and closing in space, but you have to close on his right shoulder. You certainly don't want to leave your feet. Just want to almost put your chest on top of that right shoulder to run McRae off the line. Gives a little head and shoulder fake and creates space and rhythm. And knocks it down to extend this to a six-point lead. Trey Boyd off the curl. Misfires on the mid-range jumper. Now we have a whistle and a foul against Western Carolina. That's going to be Cork's second quickly. Looked like Alverson had the rebound and an opportunity for a runout. So the Bucks catch a break. The Catamounts give ETSU another possession. Hugley against Cork, backing him down. Slips him up and under, can't get the finish. Another foul. Mason Faulkner picks up number three. Xavier Cork impacting this game defensively with his length and athleticism. Now Tyler Harris coming back on. You know, we were talking earlier about Harris and, and speaking about freshmen who really start to get it at this time of year. Now, Travion McRae fits into that category as well. Nine points already. He's been in double figures each of the last four games. Well, those guys have played enough. They're not freshmen anymore. They're, they're sophomores with the amount of time they've logged for head coach Mark Prosser. Bo Hodges from deep. Off the mark. Catamounts get a huge stop. Three looks at that possession for ETSU. And Western Carolina able to force the Bucks into less than ideal shots all three times. And nothing but purple jerseys on the defensive glass. And off McCray on the roll. And a dunk follow underneath by Cork. And now a steal on the inbounds. Don't blink. McCray from deep. Western Carolina trying to run away with senior day here in Johnson City. We have a timeout on the floor. 14.39 to play in the contest. And Western Carolina has taken their largest lead of the game at 43-32. to We're going to take a timeout with them. Catamounts rolling here in Johnson City. Western Carolina at Freedom Hall, 43-32. The Catamounts shooting the lights out here, turning ETSU over and taking full advantage of momentum and adrenaline here in this final regular season contest. Bruce Strambarger, ETSU's got to try to turn the tide a little bit. How can they do it? A Western Carolina freshman spoiling senior day. ETSU has to establish momentum, take care of the basketball. Careless mistakes, they're getting out hustle, getting beat to long rebounds and 50-50 balls right now. Western's coming here, the aggressor. Romy Rodriguez coming out of the low post, lost the handle on the basketball. And reset to Williamson, five on the shot clock. Out to Tisdale, who's on the floor for the first time in a while. Tisdale 
the glue guy says his head coach it's a big three to help stop the momentum that was a bailout shot the ball never left the right side of the floor not a lot of movement Tisdale knocks down the contested jump Steger on the drive knocked off balance by Jerome Rodriguez and Rodriguez will pick up that contact Jerome, his second. Rodriguez in perfect position. Just a step slow. You have to know Steger doesn't take the three. He's bouncing to the rim and initiating contact. Caught Rodriguez leaning. Fork on the catch. Off to McRae, who again is a double figure, is putting fifth time in as many games down the stretch. Boyd on the reach. That's his third. Can't talk enough about these freshmen from Western. You see Travian McRae right there. Got the plays right before the break. Cork with the follow-up offensive rebound in space. And then McRae with the pick off the inbounds pass. The dagger three along with it. Alverson hasn't taken a shot yet. Down to five on the shot clock. May have to change that right here. Stripped on the way up by Williamson. Great job turning Alverson into a driver, did Williamson. Coast to coast look, and then Hodges on the handoff bobbled the catch. Western Carolina comes back out with it. So even when ETSU can get the turnover, the Catamounts get back on the other end. Best transition game the Catamounts have played in the last month. Yeah, that was their soft spot coming in. But they've been tremendous at bouncing the floor, not giving up easy work for ETSU in transition. Fork took about 12 steps with it through the lane. That might be the easiest call to make all day long. Fork reminds you of a young James Dickey. Yes. Very, very good. Very maybe, good comparison. Maybe a little advanced offensively more so than Dickey was at that stage. Yeah, I was going to say a little bit more stable offensively, yeah. but yeah, exactly that. Yeah, long and athletic, a, a game changer defensively. What a bright future he has. Fort McCray and Harris. And with Harris there. protecting his blind side there. Agile and athletic. Three or four. Inside pass to Gasson. And we have a whistle and a foul the other way. Gasson on the hold underneath, holding Halverson. Bails out. What was that? High risk pass by Trey Boyd. Well, I didn't get enough air under it. Alverson able to make the play at ground level and Gasson with the frustration foul. TSU trying to change the tempo goes with a little pressure on the inbounds. Freshman against the senior. McCray blows right past him to Harris. Bank shot, no, but draws contact. That's on Gasson. That's his fourth. Four on Lucas Gasson. Harris showing no fear with that lane line drive, just taking it right at the big guy. Tyler Harris, 80% free throw shooter, no points in 18 minutes against ETSU the first time through. Four points in the first half in this one. And then five, first free throw made of the contest. Made his last season at Independence High School in Charlotte. Started his prep career at Northside Christian. Highly recruited by Mark Prosser right away when he got to Colorado. Harris makes them both, give him six in the game. Ten point lead for the Catamounts. ETSU is down 14 with 14 minutes to play Wednesday night at Wofford. Came back and won. Similar comeback will be needed. Bucks in their 26 wins have nine where they have trailed. Rebound tipped out to McRae on the run. Catamounts with numbers. McRae going all the way. Can't get the shooter's finish. Western saying, we can play fast, too. Long misses lead to long rebounds. Western out in transition. As does Ellis. And I think that's been the difference for the Catamounts is they've taken those opportunities and gone quick tempo. None of this, hey, let's let's corral and think and regroup. They have just gone quick, pedal to the metal, tried to match ETSU's tempo and really be the tempo aggressor and converted when they got there. 
rebounds well beyond 50% from the field. Patterson holding, gets to Williamson down the baseline, hanging floater, no, for the rebound. A lot of one and dones here for ETSU. Catamounts have been tough on the boards. We mentioned they were second to only ETSU in rebounding heading into the contest. Like what Cook did, didn't force an outlet pass, waited for his guard to come get it. Transition not always there. Patterson glued to Harris as he tries to free himself, lost his balance. Offensive foul. Bucks get a stop. They need more. They've cut it to 10 here on Senior Day. Western Carolina trying to pull the upset on the road. It's 45-35. Stick with us for the final 11-22. And 22 to go. 45 35. Western Carolina trying to lock in. Wearing the whites in the 4 5 game. Mercer and the Catamounts will play in that 4 5 game. Just trying to figure out which bag to pack. ETSU to one seed. They don't want to share the SOCON title. They got some work to do to avoid that. Shooting nearly 52% for the game. They shot 55% in a 31 point win over Sanford Wednesday night. Patrick Good from deep. Rolls over the top of the rim. Rebound chased down by Faulkner. Guards have been rebounding well for the Catamounts. Yeah, today. and they had to. Tremendous job rebounding down. And he was to one shot. Great job of covering, too. Six. Dale created a little space for the ball thing. Six rebounds for Faulkner in the game. Harris misfires from deep. ETSU with an opportunity to run, but three Catamounts back kind of quell the break. Gasson on the inside against Dotson. Heavyweight matchup here. Gasson's twisting one way and puts his foot on the baseline, turns it over. Dotson had to play soft. Three personal fouls. Gives the cushion. Gasson with that long stride. Lances across the end line. It's the 11th ETSU turnover. Catamounts with 14 points off the previous 10 miscues. Meanwhile, Western Carolina turned it over 16 times. ETSU with only eight points to show for it. Dodson hard charging down the block. And a whistle and a reach in on Boyd. Thought he had all the ball. That's his fourth. Boyd and Gasson each with four. Tisdale with three. Fouls beginning to mount up. That's eight against ETSU as a team. Carlos Dotson heads back to the free throw line. Fifty-eight percent shooter. Dotson has made two of six, making two of seven now. That's huge. That's nine of fifteen at the line. Ten minutes exactly. Ten point game. Hodges on the attack. Floats it off the square and in. His first points in the second half. That's just a spread. Nice so taking advantage of the matchup. Walker splits. The middle and now a whistle and a foul call. Ball was going the other way. Hold everything here. They're going to hit Gasson with the foul, and that'll be it for it. Check that. That's Gasson's fourth foul, not his fifth. Late, late whistle. Makes you wonder if that was going to be a play through if Western's able to recover it since ETSU recovers and its numbers in the other direction. Then we have the late whistle stopping the ball. Faulkner with seven. He's a perfect three of three at the strike. That amounts largest lead on 11. Back up 10 now. Faulkner hits them both. Got four points here in the second half. Largest on the twist. And he's fouled on the way up. Fell on Tyler Harris, his second. Oh, the Catamounts. Number four, Tyler Harris. His second. 
Rodgers of ETSU, six of seven at the free throw line. Only seven attempts when these two teams met last. The Bucks were 17 of 22 at the free throw line. And part of that's the lack of offensive rebound. One shot now, Bucks settling for perimeter jump shots. There's a lot of offense in the paint tonight. Sprayed in the floor in that last possession. Hodges drives in her third. 11 points for Hodges, 19 away from 1,000. He makes this to the Bucks extend pressure. Tis daily offensive rebound. Good, looking for the three in rhythm. It's thrown off the side. Now a whistle and a ball deflected the other way. And a reach in called on Hodges. Trying for the loose ball in the corner. That's his third. Hodges, his fourth. He's down double digits Wednesday night is a hustle play by Lucas Cassant in the middle of the floor. They got them turned around. Kind of thought for a minute with the offensive rebound hustle play in space. His daily. Does that get the Bucks going? But good, unable to knock down the clean look from the corner. Faulkner perfect to the line. See that? There's no way he could make it after that. <laughs> Faulkner, we mentioned two triple doubles, one against Sanford back on Wednesday, 16 points, 12 assists, 10 rebounds, and a 14 point, 10 rebound, 10 assist triple double against North Carolina AT in non conference play. Nine for Faulkner, double bonus for the remaining 925 of this game as the Catamounts stretch the lead back out to 10. Led by six at the break. Rodriguez getting loose inside against Dotson. Dotson keeping him out of the paint. Turn around, hook is shallow. Tisdale fighting for the rebound and lost it off the foot of Dotson. So ETSU ball underneath. Two possessions ETSU has been able to extend via Isaiah Tisdale rebounding down. Shot clock. Inbounds touch Rodriguez. Good cut off. Rodriguez against Cork this time. Spins past him. Strong move. Faulkner lost the handle. Off Patterson. Panama basketball. And another stop inside for Western Carolina in a multi possession. Turn of events. Great job on the ball defense by Xavier Cork. Second guy off the floor. Just used his length to hinder Jerome Rodriguez at the rim. Is that the heat of the battle or heat of the moment or just maybe emotion? Both head coaches with their coats off. Mark Prosper's got his sleeves rolled up. You don't see that very much in the coaching world, but Catamounts want it here tonight. Steger shot fakes on Patterson. Off on the low block. Catamounts will try again. Walker on the roll. Draws Rodriguez out. Bad miss from three. Got the 1 5 switch they wanted. Walker elected not to take Rodriguez off the bounce. Once again, cool. cleaning up the defensive glass. Pray for Halverson. Pass to Steger. Air ball. That's two bad possessions there for the Catamounts offensively. Tisdale a little bit out of control. Finds Williamson. Flare out to good for three. Got it. Five for good. Seven for eight. Catamounts now mm -hmm. the support defensively. Cuts to state. One pass ahead till they found the open man. Pat Good knew what to do with it. Cuts the lead to seven. It's Western Carolina 48, ETSU 41. 7.40 remaining. Second period. Thank you for joining us. Battle. Seven-point affair. 48-41 our score. Bruce Strambarger, you've got... 7.40 to play. You're Mark Prosser. You're trying to keep your foot on the gas. If you're Steve Forbes, you're trying to rally the troops. How does both 
how do both coaches respond here? Well, Steve Ford, you want to pick up the tempo a little bit. Western Carolina's done a tremendous job managing it. Now they're getting into the, the time of the game where time and score decisions will factor in. But as you mentioned, you want to keep your foot on the gas and stay aggressive. So interesting to watch how coaches manage this down the stretch. Johnson stripped by Hughley, foul call. And it's about to get compounded. Technical foul on Hughley for his response to said foul. So get two quick whistles to Hughley. This could be a turning point moment in his first. Teams 10. Also a technical foul on ETSU. Number 21, Joe Hughley. His second. Teams 11. So the Catamounts will head to the line. They could take this back out to double digits. They'll put Halverson on the line, an 85% shooter. He would be ranked among the top four shooters in the league if he had enough attempts. Kind of a weird year for him in that regard. That's 62 less free throw attempts this year than last year. Well, a part of that is the offense isn't going through him as much with the addition of Fowler. Back to the technical foul. A very unveteran like play by the graduate student Joe Hughley. Lying on the floor and kicked the floor. And left Kevin Mathis with no choice. Emotional game. Got to keep emotions in check. Eight points. The lead now as Dotson goes to the line. He was the foul player. And Dotson makes the first of two. Nine points for Carlos Dotson. Right around a double-double again. He's got seven rebounds at last check. And he does it in such short notice, too. Less than 20 minutes. And you mentioned the other night, he got his double-double, what, 14 minutes against Sanford? 17. 17. 11 points, 10 rebounds. Hey, when you're playing it that well, take the rest of the night off. To Patrick Good. Looking inside for Hughley. Can he respond? They dip underneath. They gets the finish. Back to an eight-point game. You get a technical foul on one end, you better convert on the other. Say, short leash. <laughs> Faulkner on the drive. Poked away by Good. He'll run the one on two. Goes up from three and got it. Brown back in it here at Freedom Hall. Huge possession. What does Western do here? My guess is they go through their big guy, Carlos Dotson. Gray uses the screen. He had Dotson on the roll. Couldn't get it to him. It's a Faulkner. He's been the facilitator all year. Faulkner for Dotson. Underneath. Finish. What a move. 12 for Dotson. And now we have a whistle and a stoppage. And that's the advantage for Western. If you drive down the left lane line, Dotson able to break to the ball and finish with his left hand. A warning on Mason Faulkner for touching the ball coming out of the cylinder. And that's important there because a flop counts as a warning also, so a flop would be an automatic technical. 53-46, intensity beginning to build as time ticks down. Western Carolina trying to put themselves a win away from 20. Hughley from deep, way off the mark on the back iron, missed fault with the rebound. Bucks with a small lineup, the side on the bench with the four personal fouls, and when Hughley shoots the three, nobody to rebound underneath. McCray tried to slip it inside to Dotson, slipped it too fast. And Hughley with the seal forces the turnover. Under six to go. ETSU, if they could win this game, if they could come back, it would be the winningest season in program history. 27 wins would set a regular season mark that has not been seen in the modern era. Good on the drive. Foul on the floor. Better move by a red shirt junior to try to get to the free throw line. See Western Carolina uses that pack line defense similar to that run by Western University of Virginia and Tony Bennett. It's about connectivity. Not only guarding your man, but those within a three-foot radius of you. Patrick Good, 
85% free throw shooter. Has nine points in the game. He's averaged about eight and a half over his last four games. Couple of big threes here in the second half to pull the Bucks back in it. Off the front of the rim. Adamouts get the board. McCray with another loose ball tipped in his direction. McCray, six rebounds to go along with four assists and 12 points. What a game for the freshman. A fresh man. How about Harrison Cork as well? That's it against Hughley. Slips underneath to a cutting Steger. Nobody saw him. Otto Steger's first points in the second half. Well, and you have to have your hands up on Dotson. He's dangerous as a passer as well. Too easy a look. Hughley misfires from three again. That's his third miss from out there. Under five to go. Adamouts can stretch to double figures again. You feel like the longer this one goes, the more confident Western becomes. Western Carolina has been a team that has turned their tide thanks to their play in tight games like this. There's some conferring by the officials. They're going to give the ball back to Western Carolina. Kind of an interesting spot. Archibald Whaley had that ball thrown kind of through his legs. So he had an awkward angle at it. Try to look at the ball out of bounds. And now I think they may go to the monitor. Actually, they will not. Or at least get the timing. Reset shot clock is 18. Under five minutes to play. Adamounts trying for what would be SoCon win number 11. They won only four in the league last year. McCray to Dotson cutting, and he lays it up and in. Dotson with 14, back to a 10-point affair. Well, you have to leave to help on the driver. It allows Dotson to flash unimpeded and finish with that left hand. Good with the quick release. That's 12 for Patrick Good. Media timeout, next dead ball. Bucks elect to play it straight up defensively. Faulkner lost the handle on it. Rodriguez flips it back to good. Floater, no. Boy, the stick back. That was not textbook, but effective for the Bucks. I love what Rodriguez did. Flew it back, threw it back in blindly, but to the other end, not underneath his own defensive basket. Rodriguez lets Dotson go to the rack, give him 16 in the game. Timeout Western Carolina. Seven-point affair again as Dotson gets past Jerome Rodriguez. Who tried to play to bother spacing, then get the block. Patrick Good and boy, pulling ETSU closer. Check around the Southern Conference. Chattanooga leading UNCG early in the second half. BMI Sanford up close one point affair. Mercer trying to score a win at home over Walker. Well, the Paladins up eight right now on the Citadel, a team that has dropped 17 consecutive games heading down the stretch of the regular season. Seven point game here, ETSU with the ball down seven. Looking to try to pull off the comeback. Three and a half to go. That has been the spark. That was not his best look from three of the ball game. And defenders flying at him, trying to initiate contact. Official Joey Richardson says no, nothing there. After good with 12 points in the contest, 10 coming here in the second half. So Carolina trying to use a little bit of clock here. Now a five-second call. Dodson swinging it around. Gasson forces the turnover. That is the 20th turnover committed by Western Carolina. Go back to that sequence right before the media timeout, Dave. Give Western a lot of credit for remaining aggressive. Good hits the three in transition to cut it to five. Western out quickly with the basket to Dodson. Four point game, 255 to go. Patrick Good with 15 points. He's single-handedly kept ETSU in the ballgame in the second half. Underneath Dodson. Did he walk with it? 
No, they're going to say jump ball. Possession stays with Western Carolina. Possession to Western Carolina. Dotson got bailed out there. He was off balance coming through. That tie-up forced him forward an extra step. But it was the tie-up that caused it and not his own work. It's kind of an awkward sequence, but... Trey Boyd with the help side defense to get a hand on the ball. Now Western with a short floor, 16 on the shot clock. McRae working against Boyd. Walker on Tisdale. Rolls him to the rack. Steger out of the corner. Wide open for the three and hits. Huge shot for Otto Steger. How was Faulkner able to make that blind hammer pass? And now good throw to the floor. Fell on Halverson, his third. That's just knowing the system and knowing your teammates. And trusting the system as well. You can be told, hey, this pass will be there, but you have got to trust in the abilities of your team and your coaches to know, hey, if I deliver it here, there will be a guy here. Patrick Good with 16 in the game. Had two against Walford Wednesday night. 24-point best against UT Martin on the road earlier this year. Both down, 17 in the game. Didn't score against Western Carolina and Cullowee. Five-point affair, 2.13 to play. Didn't have to, Tisdale had the huge game. Walker on the dribble. Dotson up top against Gasson. And a blocking foul called on Gasson. And that'll be his fifth. Watch it again. Wow. What else can you do? Tell you what, you get a look at that great replay. Dotson is a big guy. He is. Great at Gasson. Standing in there and, and taking the contact. But I thought he did a great job of pushing back, giving a cushion. Draw the blow. You can't just Olay get out of his way. Hughley will come in for Gasson. Hughley and Hodges in the low post. Dotson to the line. Big three throws here. Not the first one. 17 points in the game for Carlos Dotson. Funny how good players that are poor free throw shooters shoot better at the end of the game. That's right. And you go back and look at their misses over the course of things, and they're all missed in like the first six minutes of the game. This right? guy shot in the air ball on his first attempt. Barely hit the net. Silences the crowd. A little early for that young man. A little early. 64-57. He's ready to be the hero. Patrick Good has worn that cape in the second half. He does it again. 20 in the game for Patrick Good. Four-point game again with 141 to go. Pressure off the of make. Harris in trouble. Nearly throws it away. Steger gets it across the line. Hubley setting up. Offensive foul. Foul on Dotson, his fourth. Let's go all out pressure. Western tries to make the play. Hughley, last line of defense. Great job of moving his feet. Getting in position, drawing the contact. Tisdale across the line. 90 seconds to go. Good to make it a one point game. Good. 23 from Patrick Good. 120 to play. McRae got called on the wrong side of the DHO. That was just enough room for Patrick Good, who's keeping the Bucks in it offensively. Faulkner, the skip, throws it away with a 107 play. <laughs> Steve Ford said earlier this week this team doesn't have any kind of pressure look to them. Even if their backs are against the wall, they hold their poise and composure well. 
the two possessions ago, Carlos Dotson was shushing the crowd. But, hey, the crowd's back in it now. That's a good for the lead. Off the mark, Tisdale, the offensive rebound. Now Boyd skips to good from the foul line. Trying to get the tip follow Dotson the rebound, and he is fouled by Tisdale. Not a bad foul. ETSU down one. You want to extend this as long as possible. You send a 58% free throw shooter to the line. That's actually a foul on Good, not Tisdale. So that'll keep Tisdale with three. Give Good his second. Send Dotson back to the line. What a rally. To basketball at this time of year is all about. Depth advantage has been offset by the fact Bucks have played the entire second period from behind. Let's see how much gas is left in the tank. Johnson misses the first of two. Four of ten at the free throw line now. Make or miss if you're ETSU. Don't leave anything quick. Aggressive and at the rim. It's the most. Out of 10 second differential and shot clock and game clock. One point deficit. Trey Boyd hit the game winner earlier this year here against Winthrop. Hodges banks it hard for the lead. Just a straight line drive. Got the matchup he wanted. That's an easy look over Faulkner. Hodges just too much size, strength, and athleticism gives the Bucks their first lead since early in the game. Steve Forbes wants the full timeout here with 27 and a half seconds left. Let's reset. 65-64 ETSU in front. One point lead for the Bucks. The first time they've lead, uh, led here in the second half. 27 and a half seconds to play. How do you play it defensively if you're ETSU? Well, certainly don't want to foul. A lot of options here. Guard the ball, extend pressure, maybe try to speed Western up and make them uncomfortable in the backcourt. But again, you don't want to foul, you want to close the play with a defensive rebound. Have to have five, five white jerseys attacking the defensive glass. Both teams have a double bonus. Possession arrow rest with ETSU for the final 27 and a half. Arnie Patterson will check in during the break. Arnie Foster's spot holding up. Going over there, marching orders. Trying to get to win number 19 overall on the year. A net ranking of 143. A lot of people talking earlier today that Western Carolina, no matter how they finish the regular season, good enough to be considered for postseason play and likely so. Yeah, especially with that turnaround, you have to figure that they're going somewhere. Now, what's going to be interesting here is offensively, at what point do you attack? If you're Mark Crosser, do you pull it out and go with about 10 or 12 and, and take your chances? You certainly want to get it to the rim no later than four or five to give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. Or do you attack earlier and now play the play? Put yourself in the role of trying to extend this game as long as possible. Alex Gary, the new athletic director of Western Carolina. Mike those fingernails already. Welcome to Cullowee. Welcome back to Cullowee. Former baseball player with the Cowboys. I'm sure on the edge of his seat. Really small lineup for ETSU. Bonnie Patterson, six foot four, playing the five. Here we go. Speaker to inbound. Faulkner will bring it across the midcourt line. The Bucks retreat. 22 when he crosses. Slip inside Dotson. Double team immediately. Steger for the lead. Misfires. Halverson to Fort McRae for the lead. He got it with 13 seconds to play. Two-point ball game. ETSU with a chance to answer. They can take the lead and win it. Good will do so. And hits with six seconds left. Six seconds left in the time. I'm taking the lead. What? They're going to check the clock. She gets the stop. Nobody puts a body on Matt Halverson. He gets the offensive rebound to extend the possession. It's a new career high for Patrick Good. He's got 26. He said the other day they got home from that Wednesday night game late. Went over Wofford. He went back to the uh, library on the ETSU campus at 5.45 to get ready for a class at 8 o'clock. Said he was ready for a nap. He may take one after today. Out of those, how many in the second half? All but two. 24-point second half. Seven and a half seconds to go. ETSU leads by 
68-67. And it was McRae on the one side for Western Carolina. He hit the three to give him 15. That's his season best. And then the answer by Patrick Good. McRae across the line with five. McRae frees for three. Altered shot. Knocked loose by Patrick Good. He'll run out for the ball. Western Carolina was Carlos Dotson. He had 18 points, finished with nine rebounds on the game. That'll do it for us here from Freedom Hall. On behalf of our entire crew, it's been awfully fun bringing you this season of ETSU basketball. A lot more fun in store next week down in March. For Bruce Strandbarger, I'm David Jackson saying so long from Johnson City. We're again the final score. ETSU wins it by a point, 68-67 over Western Carolina. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We'll see you down at the SoCon Tournament in Asheville. Good night from what's left of Johnson City.